Welcome to StarCraft II Battle Report. My name is Dustin Browder. I'm the lead designer on StarCraft II. And I'm Robert Simpson, an eSports team member. We've got a great game for you here today. We've got two of our players at the studio, Jan Ho Lee playing as the Zerg and David Kim playing as the Protoss. They'll be playing on Scrapyard. This is a new map we have for StarCraft II that's got a lot of really interesting features on it. And we can see here, we've got Jan Ho as the blue Zerg in the upper left part of the map. And as we move across the map, we'll see both of these players are actually very close to one another, right across this narrow gap of space and here we come up on David Kim playing as the white Protoss. There's a lot of interesting terrain features on Scrapyard, the first of which is going to be this uh, rather large front ramp that leads into your base. It's a lot harder to block than the rest of the maps that we've seen in any of the battle reports. Yeah, absolutely. A lot more challenging for the Protoss player on this map to block that ramp and defend themselves from any early aggressive Zerg moves. Coming down to this part of the map, we can see there's a natural expansion. This is a place both players are likely to try to look to lay down some additional buildings and start collecting some additional resources. And right up here in the middle, there's a small group of vents putting up some smoke. Units can't see past that smoke, so it's a great place to hide your units. Now the map continues to lead down into another expansion as well as a very important point of interest in the center of the map. This is a Zelnaga watchtower. When a ground unit gets by one of these, it illuminates a large area of vision around it and surrounding that Zelnaga watchtower is also those vents that block line of sight. Yeah, so you can see, just move past the watchtower and very briefly there while he activated it, you saw exactly how much vision that thing revealed. It's a very critical strategic resource for both players to try to control. Control of that watchtower can be the key to victory on this map. And you can see David Kim's got his first probe moving very aggressively across the map and right into the Zerg base. Oh, and it looks like David Kim just barely caught sight of Yun Ho Lee moving his drone out of his base, looking like he's going for a natural expansion currently. He is saving up those resources, as you can see in the overlay in the top left corner of the screen, and David Kim blocks it right as he gets up to that 300 mineral marker. We can see Yun Ho Lee sending out another drone trying to scare off David Kim's probe, but David Kim is resilient in his harassment. Just keep him dancing that probe around. He's blocked the building. The Zerg player's trying to place another hatch there. He really needs to get another hatchery down so he can start resourcing from that location. Instead, the Protoss player has blocked the expansion, has prevented him from putting that building into play, and you can see the Zerg player has just given up on it. He's returned to his base to continue harvesting, and the probe is just loose, running around the Zerg base, seeing whatever it wants to see, totally scouting the Zerg, even counterattacking there, looking to sort of harass this Zerg player and just keep the pressure up at this very, very early part of the game. David Kim's doing a great job with that probe right now. For every time that he pulls off just a few of those drones, off of Yun Ho Lee's minerals, it really puts Yun Ho behind for a good portion of the game. Absolutely. Just harassing his economy is very important in the only part of the map. Now you can see there is a way for these players to approach each other. It's a lot closer than going around that Zelnaga watchtower. Those destructible rocks there across that narrow bridge. And players can move over, they can use their forces to destroy those rocks. And once the rocks are down, you can move freely back and forth across that bridge. It's a very, very powerful way to sort of surprise the enemy. They're expecting you to come from a different direction, and instead you snap those rocks open and you push right through the middle. And we'll see if that's a factor in this game. Now, David Kim's base, we can see him build a cybernetics core in addition to an assimilator, so we're very, very likely to see some early stalkers out on the field. Back over at Yun Ho's base, David Kim is not giving up. He is getting the most money harassment possible <laughs> out of this probe. And oh, we can see him actually chasing, looking like Yun Ho is again going for the natural expansion. Will the probe make it in time? No! no! The probe does not make it in time, and David Kim had managed to keep that expansion off the map for a huge amount of time, but the Zerg player finally does get it into position. And here you can see there's the Zonga Watchtower, and then the Zerg player, he doesn't control it with that Overlord, but he can watch it, so he'll know if David Kim has control of the Watchtower, and he'll know whether or not David can see him coming. And you can see the probe moves into position, and it's activated the watchtower, so the Protoss player really wants to make sure that he sees what's going on. You can see in the overlay there are now six Zerglings in production about to move out of the map, and two of them are already on the way. So the Zerg are beginning their aggressive move. The Zergling, a very fast unit, very aggressive, very dangerous, and here come the Zerg in small numbers starting to swarm across the map. That Overlord knows exactly where the probe is, so those Zerglings are going to be able to run right through those vents and start harassing that probe. Will the probe be able to make it back to his base? We have a couple more Zerglings chasing in behind him, but it looks like the probe moves just just fast enough to barely escape those Zergling attacks. Yeah, he's just going to go to win. There's not a lot defending David Kim's base right now. The Protoss is looking a little weak. Here come a couple of Nullifiers. This is a new unit to StarCraft II. It's got a very powerful ability called a Force Field that it can use to block terrain. You can see the Nullifiers are moving out, but they don't want to get trapped. They don't want to get surrounded, so they move back up the ramp. And you can see the Zerg are hiding in the vents, gathering their forces, sort of waiting. To see. Here come some more Zerglings, look like, from the south, moving up into those vents. And the Zerg are just lurking there, waiting for enough forces to move in. And here they go, moving into the 
the Protoss base. So I know that's eight Zerg and trying to move up to the Protoss base, but those are two beautiful force fields set out by David Kim. He can now micro one of his nullifiers around while the other one continues to lay down cover fire. The Zerglings know they have no chance and start heading back into the base, but it's not looking like two Zerglings are going to pose a very large threat against those nullifiers and all the probes in the base. Yeah, even the probes could turn and fight if they needed to, and you can see the Zerglings are trying to remain a threat, trying to harass, and they don't really get much out of it. They're quickly destroyed by the nullifiers, and the nullifiers are sort of free to move back to protect the front of the Protoss base. Meanwhile, the Zerg have gathered in the smoke, are trying to hide, and that's a Zealot and three nullifiers moving out to engage. It looks like the Zerg are going to have to run for it. They're not going to be able to hang out there and survive. Ooh, it looks like David Kim might have just barely seen that one Zergling move around. Oh, and he was going for his natural expand as well, and that probe was able to see all of those Zerglings moving around. Now the nullifiers see them, but they're very slow, so those Zerglings are going to be able to make it up into David Kim's base and harass. And there goes some Zerglings, seeing what kind of damage they can do. Moving in, there's the warp in, bringing in some additional forces, another nullifier in play, and there's a force field trapping those Zerglings, preventing them from running away. The probes turn to counterattack, and they quickly destroy all of those Zerglings, and the Protoss are still perfectly safe right there in their base despite that very clever and very fast harassment by the Zerg. So generally you see force field used as more of a defensive measure, but in that case David Kim actually used it to trap his enemy within his base to kill his forces. Yeah, absolutely. Against a force like the Zerg that's so speedy and so quick, force field can be used both offensively and defensively. As we've seen time and time again in our early versions of this game, force field is just a very, very powerful weapon against the Zerg, especially when playing you know, against them when they're swarming. Any kind of map with a lot of open space, it's a very powerful weapon to control and channel the Zerg. And of of course, it's also very powerful to prevent the Zerg from escaping should they try to do so. And you can see that Overlord getting a little bit harassed there by the Nullifiers, but the Nullifiers don't quite have the range and the Overlord is going to escape. Now, David Kim is massing his forces over by that Zelnaga Watchtower. He can now see that large area of vision, which is very strong. He sees no units coming. He knows that he just killed a bunch of Yunho Lee's Zerglings, Zerglings yeah, so it's so, time to take advantage of that window yeah, of opportunity. Yeah, so he's moving in now. He feels like he's got the advantage, and he wants to press. He knows the Zerg don't have, are down a few Zerglings, and he thinks he might have enough to do some damage here. Now, there is a spine crawler in play and a bunch of roaches. This is kind of a problem for this Protoss force. They don't have really the power to deal with this. Great use of the force field there, trapping oh. half of the Wow, and there's the burrow, the counter by the Zerg, preventing him taking any real damage there as the nullifiers move into the Zerg base trying to do some damage and get some damage out of this attack. Oh, but there's too many roaches. The nullifiers have to continue to move up. Into oh, wow, and they lock out all of Yunho's defenses except for just a queen and one roach are up there, but they have to burrow or else they're going to get focus fired down. So now the nullifiers again have free reign over Yunho's base. What a great move, using that force field to block them out. He's really got inside. Look, all of the drones are underground. They're not able to resource. It's a really expensive attack, but still very... Oh, more force fields protecting his nullifiers from enemy attack, and the drones are still underground, not able to harvest even more with the force fields. And now it looks like the drones are getting very, very aggressive. they got to fight back. they got to get into position. The nullifiers Ooh. are quickly overwhelmed by those drones and, of course, by the roaches. But still, what a great use of force field. What a great aggressive approach by the Protoss player trying to get some damage in there into play and really sort of tear down that economy. You can see David Kim, of course, is still watching the rest of the map. There's another watchtower here in the southern part of the map which watches these high-yield resources. This is a very important thing for players to capture in the game. Get a lot of money from those yellow crystals, but you can see now... The Zerg are on the move. David Kim may have miscalculated by that aggressive move. Here come the Roaches moving on the map. That's a significant force. Each one of those units, each one of those Zerg units regenerates very, very rapidly. And we've got some Stalkers here to counter them, but that's a very large Zerg force moving into play. So as you can see, the Roaches very clearly outnumber all of these Stalkers, but we did see David Kim research the Blink ability, and oh my god, there it is. He's moving away, blinking just as his Stalkers get to the kill range from all of those Roaches. He only gets one of the Stalkers down. We still see a ton of Blinks going on. He only lost one Stalker out of that enormous attack. We see the Roaches continue to move in to David Kim's base and try to pressure. We see another Force Field trapping all of the Roaches inside his natural expansion. David Kim is now able to micro around those Stalkers and continue to take out the Zerg threat. Yeah, that was a great use of force field. It didn't look like it was that dangerous, but you can see even now it's preventing those forces from coming up very, very quickly. And you can see how badly damaged the Protoss are in this battle. The Roach is regenerating very, very quickly. The Stalker is not regenerating almost at all. Their shields regenerate, but not very quickly at all. And you can see the Protoss are slowly being worn down by this Roach advance. There's some more Warpins coming into play there. Some more Stalkers are coming to the defense, and the Protoss player is just backing up, buying time, using Blink, and he's managed to just beat down that Zerg force. Oh, what a great use of Blink, continuing the pursuit 
suit now pushing right back. It looked like the Protoss player was in a lot of trouble right there, but he used Blink very, very effectively, and he bought himself time. That gave him time for more warpins, and there's another Blink as he chases down this Protoss force, relentlessly wearing away at them until finally the Zerg are forced to burrow underground and hide from this very, very dangerous Protoss force. And here comes the Protoss again on the offensive, using a Phoenix, an air unit, to hunt overlords. This is very, very dangerous for the Zerg player as his overlords are hunted and destroyed in the sky. And here comes the Protoss pushing against the Zerg. So we see a ton of Stalkers moving up into now Yunho Lee's expansion, but there are too many Zerglings. Those Stalkers are not strong enough against enough units that can surround them. They only have Blink, and that's on a 10 second cooldown. So those things are going to get surrounded again because the Zerglings are so fast, and David Kim's assault is thwarted. Yeah, and you can see just how badly those units were damaged in the previous attack. The Stalkers were quickly surrounded. They couldn't really get away. They couldn't use their speed. Even the Blink was of limited use. And here comes a combo. Here comes a Phoenix and Void Ray combo using the Graviton Beam to pick that Queen in the air. See, she's floating in there helpless right now from the Graviton Beam. And the Void Ray using his very powerful attack to just power down that Queen. You can see the Protoss are just on the offensive in the air. Meanwhile, the Zerg are on the offensive in the ground, moving in to engage the space. It's a lot of Zealots and a Photon Cannon as the Protoss back up and use that very narrow position, trying to trap the Zerg where they can't get a surround. The Zerg want to wrap around their enemy, but the Protoss want to fight in a narrow frontage. And the Protoss had that advantage there, so the Zerg didn't like it. They moved away, and now they're going to see what kind of damage they can do in what appears to be a fairly helpless Protoss base. So it looks like David Kim's main base is very, very defenseless at this point. We see a couple of those Zerglings looking to move away from the pack, and oh no, we see a couple of Banelings getting morphed in over on that left side of the map. Meanwhile, all the Zerglings and the Roaches are trying to distract the Protoss units, make sure that he does not get any, any units over there to attack them, because right now, while those Banelings are hatching, they're extremely vulnerable to any attacks. That's right, and those Banelings do explode when they get close to the enemy, and here they come, moving in. The Zealots have no defense against things. They don't want to fight them, except in small groups. Oh. Try to sacrifice a Zealot, but he fails. And here come the... Moving in! Oh! Oh, oh my god! Took out a ton of those probes with those Banelings, and both Photon Cannons are down. What a great use of the Baneling against that Protoss economy. Now, despite the fact that Yunho did just make it in there with that many Banelings, we can still see that David Kim does have the economic advantage. He has 44 probes out on the field, versus Yunho only having 37 drones out there. This is really going to make a difference in the long-term play. Yeah, he's really going to catch up in his economy. He did a lot of damage. He's helped right a lot of his issues right there and got himself back into sort of an even footing, more or less. But he's going to need to keep building workers if he's going to stay in this game. You can see he's got Banelings there morphing in that hidden area and another expansion. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, the Protoss player is tearing through those rocks and prepared to make what may be a little bit of a surprise attack on the Zerg. Ooh, but it's apparently not that much of a surprise attack. I believe that Yun Ho had an overlord somewhere nearby so that he could see those destructible rocks going down. We see David Kim working through that second destructible rock only a few more seconds, and he'll be able to move into Yun Ho's base, what he thinks will be freely. He now sees, oh wow, looks like Yun Ho's gonna be tricking him, trying to bait all of those Protoss forces into chasing only his four rushes, and boom! Oh, oh no! Ten oh, Banelings jump all up of out those of the Banelings ground. just took out all of the Zealots, you can see, but only by using Force Field did he narrowly escape totally destruction of his force right there. Still huge amounts of damage done to the Protoss. All of those Zealots taken out. And you can see that once again, the Zerg are in a really great position here. They've got another expansion going down. There are other expansions other expansions working great. And the Protoss player just took a ton of damage from those Banelings. Now up on the resource server, we saw that just now that David Kim is still resourcing about double the minerals per minute that Yun Ho Lee is currently able to gather. So David Kim, uh, over the rest of the course of this game, is likely just going to plain outmass him unless Yun Ho makes good use of that second expansion. Yeah, he's really going to have to get that up and running to take advantage of it. And you can see, here we go, moving it again. A couple of Banelings were taken down before they could morph. He's got a few Banelings hidden underground. Oh, that's not good for those Nullifiers. Wow, what a ton of damage against those Nullifiers, losing some critical aspects of his force. He's using the Blink Micro, trying to play Keep Away, but he's just really having a lot of trouble against this persistent Zerg force. Oh, and here come an Infester. He's coming around over here. They have a Neural Parasite ability, which is that Mind Control. And we can see a Mind Control that Immortal, and now he is using David Kim's Immortal to kill David Kim's Stalkers. And a Stalker is controlled as well. A lot of Queens have been destroyed. That's very important for the Zerg not to lose those Queens. But still, the damage is done. The Zerglings are out. Here come some more Infestors waddling around the map before quickly burrowing underground. You can see the Stalkers are trying to do some damage, trying to get into the base, see what they can do. It's too many Zerglings, and they're quickly overcome, and another Protoss attack is pushed back by the Zerg. Ooh, losing three queens is a really big deal for Yun Ho at this point, because he really needs to have those out on the field to give him that extra spawn 
of larva. Yeah, he really needs that for his economy. It's very, very important. But you can see the Protoss player here is also teching. Oh, here come the Zerg moving in, trying to do some damage. But the Photon Cannon is going to keep those Zerglings at bay. They can't get the surround on the Photon Cannon. And of course, the probes could join in the fight. And here is the real danger. Colossus are being built on that high ground location by the Protoss. So that's a real threat to this Zerg player. That's right. David Kim's doing a little sneaky tech up there, building those two robotics facilities and making those Colossus out of anywhere that Yun Ho was able to see so far. David Kim is gathering out in front of his base, but because those infestors are able to move while burrowed, Yun Ho knows exactly what David Kim is up to. Yeah, so he's seen everything that's going on there. He, of course, hasn't seen the Colossus yet. He's been using his scouts on the main base. He doesn't know the threat of the Colossus potentially is even in play at this point, though he could guess. And we can see over here there is a warp prism over here. This is a way that the Protoss player could warp in some additional units. You can see he's hidden it over here for a rainy day, no doubt hoping to sort of distract the, the, the Zerg player and then move in and warp in some additional forces down there. Oh, oh my what? goodness! <laughs> Neural Parasite on the Colossus. The Colossus have been mind controlled and you can see there's, they've been trapped now using force field. They've been trapped by their own forces and the Colossus are just destroying the Protoss forces. What a great turn Yet by the Zerg. using those Colossus to do terrible, terrible damage to David Kim's own army. We can see the Zerglings are now able to surround those Colossus as they finish off their Neural Parasite what looked like just a brutal, brutal attack by the Protoss was quickly, quickly turned by the Zerg, but you can see the distraction may have worked. While the Zerg were all out in front fighting, there were some additional Stalkers warped in. Meanwhile, this other part of the map, the, Pro the Zerg the Protoss are on the attack. They destroyed a Zerg expansion, and it looks like the Zerg are in a little bit of trouble here. They managed to sort of fight back all the threats that are throwing at them, but the economy advantage is really starting to show a key uh, advantage here for the Protoss as they just continue relentlessly attacking. Here the Stalkers just tearing up this Zerg expansion. So you can see a few infestors and a couple queens come into play. We do see that neural parasite again coming out and surrounding, taking over a couple more stalkers, able to finish off that force. We see the queen is trying to take out the phase prison, but it looks like four immortals warp into play, and there's just not much that Yun Ho Lee is able to do to stop it. What a huge force. Four immortals. That and there's the GG. The Zerg player knows that game is effectively done. G good game, he says to David Kim. What a great game between those two players. We saw some excellent micro between Roaches and Burrow, as well as the Stalkers with Blink. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for this StarCraft II Battle Report.